Hello everyone. Welcome to the automated script. The easiest and finest way to start your automation testing. To stay up to date with my latest videos and cool automation tips, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I am Mahesh and I am senior test automation architect with 14 plus years of experience in software test automation. I worked in R&D department for 5 years on multiple technologies and languages. I got approved one patent and another in queue. Today I am going to explain you the Jenkins pipeline in the test automation in detail. So listen to this video till the end and you will understand how Jenkins work with Selenium automation or test automation. It will help you to answer Jenkins questions in interview also. So let's start. So in industry, many people consider continuous integration uh, and the test automation a game changing combination for development. That's why companies are making the move to include this methodology in their test automation setup. Now why has CI become more popular? Briefly at its core, continuous integration helps ensure that a build is verifiable and this method helps developers determine whether or not a build is ready and if they can move on to the next step of the process, the automation makes it simple to determine this and get results quickly. If you can see on my screen, so there is an automation tester who can code or the developer who can code via GitHub work to, uh, webhook. The code base goes to your GitHub, the shared repository. I explained GitHub in my previous video. Please have a look at that. Now, with the Jenkins server, you can communicate from the GitHub, you can accept all your repository uh, data and you can pull that, go back and then you can commit, build and the test where we have very important which we need to find more in detail and the stage and the deploy. Okay, so good software testing practices and continuous integration now share a link. So when building, testing and releasing software is a collaborative process. Results improve across the board. One of the most popular ways to implement this method is by using Chenkin. Okay, so wondering uh, what is the tool is used and how it fits in with CI. So I will in this video, I'll make sure and uh, explain you the Jenkins, how it's supposed to your test automation. Now what is Jenkins? So Jenkins is an open source Java software system and that designed to aid in the continuous software integration process. It is a server based system that runs in a servlet container such as Apache Tomcat. And Jenkins supports version control tools as well. For example, the GIF which I have already mentioned in my diagram and can execute your project based on Apache and or Apache Maven so so that arbitrary shell or windows batch scripts and commands can execute it. So during the development of large system, there is a need for a continuous process of deployment and testing new version of your product. As teams strive to be truly agile and deliver high quality software quickly, continuous integration that is CI has evolved to become an integral part of your software ecosystem. When the discussion pivots to CI, the first tool that comes in our mind is your Jenkins. Now Jenkins is that's why a most popular of any of the CI tool used today by software teams and is playing a significant role in the accelerating the dev and day ops both. So it is an open source CI platform built in Java and has thousands of native integration with useful tools. So Jenkins enables developers to build, deploy and automate projects. So thereby improving time to market and product quality. As automation testing continues to help organizations scale their software quality efforts, it is imperative that automated tests are also part of CI pipeline to achieve true continuous delivery. If you can see here on my test flow, on my this uh, pipeline, there is a test that is a third phase. Here I can mention the test automation as well. So most test types including unit integration, functional, regression are run via CI depending on the size of the test suit and the type of application under test. Now if you can see there are three things mentioned that is continuous integration, then continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Okay. So what is continuous integration? 
So before we jump into how Jenkins supports test automation, it's important to understand the role of continuous integration. Now CI is a development methodology where the developer commits changes to source code in the shared repository. Like here, coder, the developer commits his changes to the source code and the shared repository. This typically takes place several times a day. The benefits is that it enables teams to find and resolve issues early in the development process. There are many tools teams can use to implement continuous integration. Now, depending on what they choose, there are also other functions uh, developers can take advantage of such as using test servers and providing teams with the test results. Now, CI become a best practice method because of how much it improves the final product. Most of the time, software developers work in the isolation. And after they complete their work and the make changes, they need to integrate those changes with work done by the rest of the team. And this process is usually drawn out and the end results is complex that developers have to resolve and less productivity overall. So that's why continuous integration helps to eliminate these problems. And the CI method ensures that bugs can be found and fixed early in the development process. When you use test automation with CI, it also ensures that builds are consistent. So that's why continuous integration is a game changer for increasing the adoption of test automation for every step of the software development process. So uh, CI adoption brings various opportunities in the software development processes and moreover, the process requires an additional professional role known as the test automation engineer. In this uh, particular video of what I said is we will describe how CI affects the working day from a test automation engineer point of view and what are the achievable benefits of continuous integration. So now in continuous integration, every code commit is built and tested, but is not in a condition to be released. I mean the build application is not automatically deployed on the test servers in order to validate it using different types of black box testing, like user acceptance testing. In continuous delivery, the application is continuously deployed on the test server for UAT. Or you can say the application is ready to be released to the production anytime. So obviously continuous integration is necessary for continuous delivery. Now the continuous deployment is the next step which passed continuous delivery where you are not just creating a deployable package but you, you are actually deploying it in an automated fashion. Let me summarize the difference is using the workflow. In simple terms, the continuous integration is a part of both continuous delivery and continuous deployment. And the continuous deployment is like a continuous delivery, except that releases happen automatically. But the still question up here, whether continuous integration is enough? So definitely not. So continuous delivery, the general idea is that all code that is pushed into the repository should be in a uh, a state that can be deployed at any time. So the knowing a feature is ready normally means having a test to ensure it works as expected. If feature isn't quite ready, then it should be hidden from the end user and have a feature switch. So this is known as the dark launching most of the time. So once this repository has all its test passing for the code base, it gets automatically deployed to an environment in a single easy state. Having a deployments in a repeatable condition, it makes them quick and easy. It also allows you to iron out any issues with your deployment strategy nearer to the start of the project. Now, once we say the continuous integration and continuous uh, uh, delivery, people may ask what is continuous Jenkins? So Jenkins is the glue that allows you to bring both these practices together. That is your continuous integration and continuous delivery. The flow that is used to make resembles of the, this pipeline which I have showing on this flow. So developer work on the feature in their local development environment. Once it works with the passing test, the changes are pushed to the repository and we use Git. So this is all done using the master branch. Be sure you can treat Jenkins as a gatekeeper for this process. And 
only ever push into the master branch and let Jenkins do the rest. So that means whenever any new push comes to the branch or your uh, shared repository, you can ask Jenkins to trigger the jobs. So Jenkins is continuously pulling our repository for changes on the master branch. When it detects new changes, it pulls down the code and runs a number of tools to ensure the code base is stable and in the condition fit or deployment. So upon the successful builds, we automatically deploy to somewhere that all the dev team can view the build on a particular continuous environment. So when with the client is happy with one more manual button click, it's ready to go into the production environment for the end user here itself. Now, again, this question comes, do you think is that still enough? Answer is no. So again, when we say continuous integration and continuous delivery, definitely we need the continuous testing also where the testers or the automation testers or the software testers, the role comes into the picture. So recently we looked at the related concepts of continuous integration and continuous delivery, but continuous testing takes this philosophy and shift it left. The key aim of continuous testing is to bridge the gap between developers and testers. Historically, developers would complete their work, then pass the code to the testers. If they were errors, these were passed back, else the code was released. There were always exceptions to this. For instance, the developers always did unit testing themselves, but as a rule, the two roles were completely separate. Over the time, there has been a move to shift testing left, meaning Moving it earlier in the de uh, development cycle, some development methodologies embrace this completely, such as test driven development TDD, that key to shift left and process to the blur on the boundary between developer and tester. And as a minimum, tester should be embedded into developer's team and developers should be given the power to run the test themselves, so speed the whole release cycle up. So that's why continuous testing is the logical endpoint of the process. And the aim is to provide continuous feedback to the developers about the state of their code. And this should expose any problems early on. And this reduces the business risk. And the general, if you can see here, uh, you can specify the job or the project name and add the description. And this is also where you can add any parameters for the job. And you can have your source code management that is uh, any of your GitHub or something. You can trigger the builds and that build environment. This is where you can choose option based on environment that you execute the build in particular environment. Like you want to execute on your queue environment, SIT, alpha, or your beta or any other dev environment. And once you, once you commit those changes and you can build, then post build action, you can configure how to report the results of this job and then this will allow you to send email updates on the status of the job and set up a notification. So Jenkins again here the ideal for large development of this project. Okay and where customization is a key. So fortunately Jenkins easy to customize and uh, to that large library and also the plugins. Now Next question comes, how Jenkins supports test automation? Now that's why we've taken a look at how CI and Jenkins fits together. Now you may be wondering how test automation fits, fits into this picture. So next we'll cover some of the specific feature that Jenkins and uh, Jenkins uh, has and how Jenkins supports test automation. So there are three major benefits you can expect when using Jenkins to support test automation. First is your scheduling test automation. So using Jenkins, developers can spend a less time and effort on testing or managing test automation. Since Jenkins is free, easy to use and user friendly, developers are able to get up and running in very little time. So that following installation, testers can schedule and run test automation cases when they are ready and then dedicate their time to other tasks. Then details on the test failures is my second point where we can say understanding the cause of the test failure and it's critically important for developers too. So Jenkins provides details on test failure to give developers more insight. That means 
Any failures, then developer will get that notification. And using Jenkins, you can easily access the details on a test failure in one click. Once you navigate to these details, you will find the error message and information surrounding the test failure. This gives developers the opportunity to sort out complex issues they may not have seen before the testing. And they also gain opportunity to dig into the reason behind the failure. Now summarize and the result strength. That is my third point in the which Jenkins supports to the automation tester. So Jenkins provides both test summaries and information on the result strength. On the test result strength graph, the users can see what test results look like over a time and gain more insight on how to move forward. Test summaries give specific information on the number of tests, how long they took to execute and other information that can play a role in the total productivity. Now Jenkins can automatically trigger the test results mails after the execution of test suits. Now out of the box, if you can ask, Jenkins provides support for email notification and also this can be activated by tracking email notification checkbox in the post build actions. I will show that demo later on. In the test phase, we perform the performance testing, we perform the test automation, we perform the unit test report and find out the execution results or the summary in this phase. So very important phase where the test automation or the testing people are involved as well. So now we really love using this workflow at MADE and have noticed big improvements in speed of delivering uh, most of our projects as well. If you need to convince someone higher up or the chain or you want to maintain someone or ma manage someone to the management side, share the benefits of uh, all this workflow or the Jenkins pipeline in test automation like reduce the merge headache, then find errors and resolve them quicker, centralized location for deployments, then faster repeatable deployment, and visibility and traceability of all deploys or the deployed code and faster feedback from the clients and also from the end users because it is all continuous integration, continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Finally, we will deploy it on production and similar cycle will continue for all your QA, SIT, UAT, alpha or beta phase. So finally, to close this, Jenkins is a great choice if you are ready to jump into the test automation, it works well with the CI methodology and helps your team complete the testing process more quickly. And there is a reason why Jenkins is one of the most popular tools available. It packs everything that companies need to support test automation into one highly functional tool. Now automating testing empowers your team and allows them to be more confident in the work that they do because they are quickly see the results. And Jenkins makes it easy to execute this type of testing. And Jenkins extensively features it provides companies with the tremendous advantage. So when you couple that with the fact that Jenkins continues to evolve to keep up with the industry, it's a no-brainer to go this route. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, I mean, this will uh, help you to understand Jenkins workflow in detail. And meanwhile, if you have any question or you want me to cover any particular topic, then please post your comment on this video. I'll try to cover that in my next video. And thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube, YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.